Welcome to Prophet CRM Learning Series. CRM is a journey. This video series will take you through the ins and outs of the Prophet CRM. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's program. My name is Warren Stokes. I'm the host and presenter today. And I am truly delighted to share one of the most popular topics that we have ever produced here. It's a continuation of a very successful webinar series, and this one is called The Seven Secrets of Outlook. I hope you'll get a lot of value from this, and my goal is to make this uh, a very good use of your time today. That The whole concept here is about taming your Outlook inbox, managing your time, and essentially being more productive. This demonstration and presentation relates to Outlook 2019, and Microsoft 365 environment. But many of the concepts do apply to older versions of Outlook. And I'll also cover some, some of the version differences here. So let's get started. I wanna start with a question. Did you ever wonder why some people get more done than others? Hmm, why might that be? Well, perhaps it's because they're more organized. I'm gonna tell you a very quick story. When I was in high school, I had a civics teacher. His name was Bernie Richter. And one day he was, and he was very well known in the community as being a successful business businessman as well as a teacher. And one day he, we had a, a class and he was talking about some, actually some business things. And he says, does anyone have any questions? And I raised my hand and I say, Mr. Richter, um, how, how does one become successful in business? And he thought for a moment and he said, well, it's really one thing. He said, Warren, all you have to do is do what you say you're going to do. No more and no less. And that stuck with me for all these years. But one of the things that I found over the years was that's a great concept and a good goal, but how do you do it? Well, that brings us to kind of the meat of the program today. And I'm gonna explain how to understand Outlook functions. That's a key thing. It might be a little more uh, than, deeper than you thought, but it has a lot to do with managing your time, gaining control of your inbox, which can absolutely be kind of a tiger that you wrestle with every day if you're like me and thousands, millions of other people. But really, it's about enhancing your productivity so you can get more done. And a little side bonus is probably be able to share some of these tips with your friends and maybe impress them. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time, and we're going to go fairly quickly through these concepts, and then we'll spend the most of our time actually demonstrating how all this works. But understanding Outlook functions. Okay, using color to get more organized. That's a really key concept that I really love the magic of rules. You'll be amazed if you start using those. Conditional formatting, uh, it's really powerful uh, functionality that's in Microsoft Outlook. How to insert content from templates, templates and with 365 environment that has even more capabilities than it used to. Quick steps, wow, you're gonna love this if you don't already use it. And how to transform things like emails into contacts, transforming emails into tasks and appointments, just super easy. So the, um, the first part that I wanted to spend just a minute on is understanding what Outlook is all about. Why, does Outlook, why is Outlook, if not the most, it's one of the most uh, popular productivity tools in the world. Uh, if you look at the statistics, hundreds of millions of users. And one of the key things is email, but what is email? It's really about communications. We use it every day. Many of, many of our life's hours are consumed with email, reading email, replying to email, dealing with email. Uh, and the, the, probably the second most common function of Outlook usage is just managing your time. I call it that because I don't call it a calendar necessarily. That's what it is. But it's really about managing your time. And, and that's a really key thing in getting things done, isn't it? And you'll see that it's not just about meetings. It's about blocking off time to do things that you want to get done. And speaking of getting things done, the task management in Outlook is really powerful. Not a lot of people use it when I talk to them, but if you start thinking about what that is, that's your to-do list. And you're gonna see how powerful that is, especially when combined with, combined with blocking off time on your calendar to get things done. And finally, you probably know Outlook contains a, um, a, con um, a contact management database. Not really robust, but I'm gonna share at the end of this presentation a little bit about our CRM called Profit CRM. And uh, I think you'll find some, uh, some value in that perhaps as well. The uh, moving quickly through the topics before we jump into the presentation, I wanted to explain a little bit about the differences between the Outlook desktop version 
of, of uh, Outlook 2019 and the Outlook desktop version of 2019 as it relates to 365. And uh, I'll, as I go through the presentation, I'll show you a few examples of those. But here's a concept for you, or actually four concepts. And when combined, I think you're going to uh, really, really be amazed at how it can help you tame your inbox, tame your Outlook inbox. So if you do one of these four things when you get an inbound email, number one, deal with it. Whatever it is, reply to it, you know, create the task or whatever is associated with that. But the number one thing is to tame your inbox. You got to do one of these four things. Deal with it. Delegate it, which means, you know, delegate it to others. Delay it, which might be a valid uh, tactic for some things. Or delete it. If Four things. And I think you're going to be surprised if you take one of these four actions with every single email you'll get. You'll just be amazed how much it enhances your productivity. It gives you more time uh, in your day and helps you get things done. So the power of the four Ds. Using color is awesome. I use it a lot. Not everyone relates to color uh, as much as uh, other folks, but I use color a lot in categories and emails in my calendar, even in my contacts. And it just gives you a visual flag of things like, what, what is this contact about? You know, is, are they a client, a prospect? Um, what are the categories on your calendar and how do those work and what do they mean? Uh, color coding your tasks so you can see why maybe you want to, uh, prioritize them with color schemes. So using color is a key thing, which we're going to get into. And the magic of rules, one of my favorite things. So the, the key thing in taming your inbox is managing that high volume. I get over 100, 100 to 150 inbound emails every day. And I don't know how I would possibly uh, survive without actually using all these, these uh, techniques here. But the power of rules lets you auto essentially auto route emails into certain folders based on certain criteria. So the magic of rules we're going to cover. And conditional formatting is a, a cool automated function that lets you do things like make emails pop out in bright colors or bold bold fonts uh, that have certain keywords in the, in the body or uh, subject line. And, and color coding your calendar. The key thing about that is understanding where you're spending your time. I mean, come on, that's like one of the most important things uh, in personal life, for sure, but most importantly in business. Where are you spending your time? If you're in sales, are you spending your time generating revenue or having a bunch of internal meetings? So as you'll, as you'll see when we go through this, I have ways to show you how to do that. So you can change the color and font of emails and auto color your appointments and, and just essentially help you understand where you're spending your time and kind of making the most important things pop out. Now there's a really uh, valuable feature. It's been around a long time. It's called Quick Parts. And, but I talk to literally hundreds of people a month um, in my business and, most of them don't know about this particular feature called Quick Parts. It's the ability to easily insert content into emails, but you can also insert content like meeting details into appointments and even create tasks with instructions from these little uh, Quick Parts. They're called their type of template. But now the 365 environment offers a, a yet another way to uh, use templates. The nice thing about these templates is they follow you around if you're familiar with 365, how you know, if you're logged in on your laptop, your desktop, your home computer, and you're a 365 user, all of the, the same, you know, information follows you around, including these templates, whereas quick parts are a local phenomena. There's kind of a, kind of a, you know, um, way to make them uh, reproduce on other computers. But this is a very nice feature of that. Uh, the 365 environment giving you templates for emails and such. Uh, by the way, they work with emails and appointments, but for some reason, they don't have a function for templates and tasks. I don't know why. Uh, quick steps, though. We're going we're gonna to jump into that here. I think maybe I'll just do that first as we get into it, because quick steps, once you discover it, it's about saving time and about re uh, eliminating repetitive actions, doing things like, you know, creating a, maybe there's an email every time you get a new order, you send it out to a group of people or this or that, that'll be the example I use, but it could be anything, meetings, emails, different types of actions. So that's a powerful thing. The quick access toolbar, most people know about it, but I like to move it below the ribbon. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then there's the concept of transforming emails, just a drag and drop. In, uh, so you can take an email and turn it into a contact or a task or even an appointment. And then I'm going to, uh, at the end of the presentation today, I'll talk a little bit about Profit CRM. Many of you are, are clients today, maybe you're a potential client, but this is a very broad subject, this outlook and taming your inbox. Uh, it actually has right now over 1.6 million uh, views on my YouTube channel where we uh, post these and you'll, you'll find a lot of other outlook related uh, videos on that. 
So I'm going to just switch gears. We're going to go right into the calendar here. Let's, uh, I was going to start with calendar, but let's do, let's change the plan here. Uh, let's start with those, those, um, what we call the um, uh, quick steps. So we're going to, we're going to do a little tutorial on quick steps right now, how to create them and what they're all about. Um, so quick steps are found right up here in your, and by the way, whenever I'm I uh, want to emphasize something. I'll be using this little circular uh, highlighter here. So on the top of your ribbon and across the top, you'll, this is the ribbon and Outlook, if you don't know that. And you'll see in the home ribbon, you'll see one of the things is quick steps. Now, I've already created quite a few because I use this a lot, but I'll show you a couple examples and we'll talk about, you know, kind of how they're created. But let's just say I wanted, to, I wanted to create a sales meeting, which I will do fairly frequently. Well, all I have to do is click this quick, this, uh, quick step that I've already created and look what happens. It creates the entire meeting, uh, invited to whoever you want by by default. The details of the meeting can be embedded in the in the in the notes area here. Uh, the title of it, you can have the location, and it's just literally one click after I've created this to create an action. In this case, a sales meeting. But here's another one. Maybe I want to have a, a I get a new customer and I want to, you know, there's a repetitive email that I always do. I call it the. Uh, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but I got a new order email. Click, click the button and it creates that email that I would be creating manually every time. Hopefully I get a lot of orders. So this is one that saves me a ton of time. Notice how it's addressed to the certain lists or people. The subject line is there, the content is there. So this, you know, you can still edit it, but it's literally click and I'm ready to actually, you know, send that email or, or in the prior example, um, you know, send that meeting request out. So the concept of this is pretty simple, but you do have to have a little understanding of how it works. So if you go up here into the quick steps, there's it, not intuitive, but the bottom arrow with the little line above it gives you various options. Uh, it'll give you the entire list of your quick steps that you've created, but I'll show you the manage quick steps because that'll show you how to create these essentially. So what happens in here is that each one of these has been created and I'll click edit on my, let's just say that new order email to show you how it works. When you create a new quick step, which is just click uh, new, you give it a name and you would expand uh, show options usually, but the two is just like the address of who it's to. If I click the two, you can see it brings up my uh, global address book in Outlook, or you can just type in an email. Again, we're creating one that's repetitive, so I have a, a distribution list here. You can flag it like with an importance or various other flags that are part of Outlook. You can give it an importance you know, high importance, normal, low. Of course, you know, I would usually send mine with high importance because I'm so important. And then you put your content in here in the text. You can also make it a quick uh, a tool tip, which just is, creates a shortcut. If you click in control shift S or whatever, it'll create that same thing for you, not having to go up to the ribbon. So again, and how that was created is if I just go up to my, my, uh, my menu here and I just say new quick step, and then you have some items here that you can uh, generate like a new email, all right? So that creates the, the basic uh, email content. And just as I explained before, you fill out those little boxes and it'll show up in your list. This is so awesome. I'm gonna show you one more time, you know, how, how I would use this. I'm gonna say, I wanna create a new sales meeting. Click, there it is. Awesome, I could still do other things to it, but that's a huge time saver. So that's what we call the uh, quick steps in in Outlook. So let's talk a little bit about using color to get more organized. And I'm gonna start with the calendar. Using color to get more organized. Well, conceptually, I wanted to kind of uh, add some detail to this. All my uh, items here are color coded and I, got a, I just finished a couple of those. So I'll mark those complete. Those are my tasks. So a couple of things, first of all, how to lay out your, your screens here. You'll notice I keep my task list in my to-do bar on the right of my calendar because they really work hand in hand. Now at the bottom, you have your navigation of mail, calendar, people, tasks, uh, and you could just click on you know tasks and it'll bring me to that, that same view. But again, I combine it. How did I do that? I just went up here to view in my ribbon and I just put my to-do bar. If I remove it, I'll show you. If I wanna add my to-do bar to the right of the calendar, I go to my calendar view and I just add tasks to my bar over here. Pretty simple, huh? Oh, another little thing that I get a lot of questions about because by default, Outlook will come with what's called compact navigation. 
Okay, and it, that turns it into these little icons. Look at the lower left of my computer. I don't know, I can see that's an envelope. I guess that's mail. There's a little square with some dots in it. Maybe that's, I don't know, calendar, a couple of people. You know, there's a little checkbox, but what do those really mean? Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I like to have the word spelled out so I can easily see it. So you, there's three little dots here on the, on the by these little icons. What you do to change that is you click on them and go to navigation options. And I just unchecked compact navigation and voila, now it says mail calendar people and tasks, much more understandable. One other little thing about that is you can add, you can define how many um, items you wanna display there. So maybe I wanna add things like my notes to that. Okay, so I can move that up. Um, number of items to display, five. So I'm just changing that. So now I've got notes in here, which as you may know, are the sticky notes, which are a cool thing, a new thing in, in Outlook. Uh, they're literally just sticky notes. So mail, calendar, people, whatever you want down here. And all, again, all I'm doing is I'm selecting um, to remove the compact navigation. But that's up to you. Maybe you like the little pictures. I don't. I like to go to the regular words spelled out. Any event, let's go back to the calendar and talk a little bit about color coding. I digressed a bit. Let's see here. Um, well, first, you can manually color code things like appointments. You create an appointment and you can use Outlook categories like uh, I could say project time or prepare for a meeting or what have you, training. And I could create a meeting like that uh, at any time I want. And then it's color coded, as you can see here in that kind of magenta color. But there's actually a, a more fun, a cooler way to color code meetings. And here's, here's how that works. It's a form of uh, conditional formatting. So, but, but I wanna stop, pause for a minute and explain why I'm color coding these things. It's so I can see where I'm spending my time. Working on website content is something that I do. Sales calls, uh, internal meetings, uh, webinars and things like that. So rather than having to manually color code them, I'll show you what it would look like. So if I just, here's the example of how it's done, then I'll show you how it works. If I type in the subject line sales call in a, um, in a an appointment that I'm creating and save it, it automatically colored it bright green, which is my my rev my revenue color. Not not bad. Okay, how how did I do that? Well, what I did is I went up to View. When I'm in my calendar, I go to View, which is up in your ribbon. I go View Settings, and I do Conditional Formatting. By the way, you'll get the recording of this, and I already have one called Sales Call but let's just say I had one called, let's add a new one and we'll give it a new color and we'll call this one a webinar. I'm just gonna do an automated color coding for webinar and may, let's make that one a nice, uh, oh, let's do that kind of a blue color right there. So now I have to assign the condition. I created it and gave it a name webinar, but the condition is whenever the term webinar in this case, is in the subject field, it's going to color code that appointment, that bright blue automatically. Now, you note, you could notice that you can search for the words in the subject and notes or use uh, other, other fields here, or even by attendees and things like that. But to do it simply, I'm going to just create one called webinar. And if webinar is in the subject field, you'll see that it will automatically create it as a bright blue appoint meeting or appointment on your calendar. And I'm going to put that right in here. I'll just say webinar today, save and close. Bright blue. So this is how you would automate the color coding of your calendar. Pretty cool, I think. So you can, you can also color code tasks. You can see many of my tasks are color coded. Uh, they, have a, they have a meaning to me. Purple is follow up. I can manually do this. I can add other, or you can actually have more than one uh, color code on your on your tasks or appointments and things like that. So you can also color code tasks. Again, same idea. Where are you spending your time? Following up, having making you know follow-ups on sales or whatever, so that you can visually get an idea of where you're spending your time. And in the case of tasks, where you plan to spend your tasks. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you a very important concept. Are you ready? Here's the important concept. Why are there both calendar and tasks? Some people say, well, if I have a task, I just put it on my calendar. I can't say that that's wrong, but here's the idea. The calendar is used to block off time to do things. Sometimes it's meetings. That's what a lot of people think of your calendar as. Other times it's to do something. But you see tasks have a unique property 
and that they persist. When I go into next week or next month, the calendar is all changed. I'm not looking at what I'm, if I was using it to block, you know, task oriented, I won't see what I'm supposed to do, but the tasks persist. And by the way, if they turn red, it means you're late on that task. Just a little tip for you there. If you get a whole bunch of red tasks, you know, you got to get caught up. Just a little business tip for you there. So that's how calendar and tasks work together. Um, the concept of color can be used in a lot of different areas. Uh, one of them would be to uh, color code um, your contacts. And how that's done is you can open any contacts. And I'm just going to do a little search for a little keyword in here so I can show some of my uh, demo contacts here. All right. And I'm just, by the way, that's just a little search function. All of these contacts here, by the way, have the word Madagascar in them somewhere. That's just a little bonus tip there. But I could take any one of these, these contacts and color code it. So this one I could see as a client. I could add another one if I want client in the IT services area. Save and close if I want. So you can use color coding in contacts as well. And those, those, uh, those are called categories in Outlook. And by the way, while I'm in here, you can also see them. If you change your view in your contacts, by the way, to a list view, you can also put the uh, categories in your list view just to kind of get organized around those. Now, by the way, a little, little sidebar on how to get columns into your, into your uh, Outlook contacts it works with actually any Outlook list view. But how I get these in here is I just hover over one of the top column headers and I right click and I use the field chooser. And um, these are things where I can, I'll move that up here a little bit. You can first of all, navigate between frequently used fields, all fields, miscellaneous fields, email fields or whatever. But I'll just show you an example of one. So I can say a car phone, that's a funny one. That must've come from the eighties. Uh, you know, home phone, maybe I wanna put that in there. You just drag and drop it up there. And that, that puts it in your column. You can make it wider and that sort of thing. So the idea of, of uh, color coding categories works throughout profit, um, throughout Outlook. <laughs> I'm gonna get into profit later. But um, so you can color code your calendar, you can color code your tasks. And uh, those are a couple of the most common, and your contacts, those are the most common things that you would use for co color coding on. Um, ooh, let's get into the magic of rules, magic of rules, let's do that, okay. So the idea behind the rules is that it auto routes emails into certain folders. Um, one of the things that I use it for could be very simply, um, I want something that uh, if it's a request for a quote, I want it automatically be routed to be routed in there. So how to, how to set this up? First, I'll show you a rule that's been set up. Then maybe yeah, we'll do another one too. So up here in your ribbon, in the home part of the ribbon, one of the options is rules. So I'll just go into where it says manage rules. In a moment, we'll create one. So I'm going to click manage rules, and I'll show you a couple of rules that are set up already. So you can see in here, I have rules for automatic replies. I don't want them junking up my inbox. I have rules for um, you know, uh, emails from certain people or various things like that. I'll use this automatic reply one. And so we'll, well, I'll click uh, change the rules so you can see how it, um, uh, it looks. So once you've set up a rule, you can see that I've checked the box that says that the rule has to do with specific words in the subject. Okay, and down here you can see that the word that I chose, or it's any number of words, is automatic reply. So if automatic reply is in the subject line, what happens? It goes to the folder, move it to the folder called automatic replies, which I have over here on the left. Because I don't want, I do a lot of email, so I don't want automatic replies to be just junked up my inbox. So that's an example of how a rule is, uh, is, looks once it's finished here. But why don't we uh, create a new rule? Okay, so let's create a new rule. This rule is going to be called request for quote. So I go in here and, um, sorry, I want to go into rules and I want to create a rule. And we're going to call that, um, we're going to call that uh, request for quote. That's the rule name. And since I'm going to use that, I'll just copy it into my clipboard. And all I really want is if the subject contains uh, uh, request for quote, I want it to do certain things. Now it might be play a selected sound. It might be display it in an alert, 
or it might be to here's my main point is to move the item into a folder and i have a folder called um request for quotes okay so i just create the rule and you can see it right there so now i've created the rule that says any email with the, the request for quote in the subject line is going to be routed to that folder which i have over here in my favorites so i click ok now the option of running the rule now might as well is it'll actually apply that rule to any emails in your inbox that are already there since I had that rule running, there are none, but you get the idea. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an email uh, to myself from another email account here, and you'll see what happens. So I have an email composed in my um, one of my Outlook account, my email accounts. And it's an email. Okay, it's from Elon Musk from Tesla. And uh, he's asking for a request for a quote. That's in the subject line. So I'm going to send that to myself. And here in a moment, it's going to show up in my inbox. It's actually, I should say, not in my inbox. Where is it going to go? Over in the request for quote as soon as it shows up. We'll see it in a moment. So one of the, there it is right there. You can see, and by the way, when you see the little bold numbers, that means you have a new item in there. So I just got a new request for quote. Wow, that is awesome. All right, so a request for quote comes in. It's routed to that folder, which I keep in my favorites. If you don't know how to put things in your favorites, you just pick any folder right click and say add to favorites that just puts them right up here no matter where you are in your folder list those are my favorite ones so, so those are used often another example of that maybe i'd want to create a rule like this i'll create a rule and it, uh and it, well actually i'm going to edit the rule uh because i i think i have that one already let's see here um oh no read later so that would be a good one okay so i'm going to create a rule called read later and I, this might be kind of funny i'm going to create a new rule called read later and uh, you'll see how this works. Read later. And the subject doesn't contain read later. It's, but I'm going to say um, it's from somebody, right? So I could change the to uh, or the from. And here's the funny thing. I could make a rule that says if uh, an email is coming from my boss, it goes automatically into the read later folder. There's a little humor for you. All right. So we're going we're gonna to do another fun one. Uh, we're going to say... Um, we're going to say we want any email that comes in that has the word, the word invoice in the subject line. Okay. And I'm going to do that with another email here. I want it to be colored a certain way in my inbox. So let's see if we can just do that. So let's say I'm going to send it to myself again from my other account. And I'm going to put in, by the way, I'll just show you what I'm doing over here. I'm just creating that email from my web account here. New invoice, please uh, review or whatever. It's just, you know, whatever's in the content of that email. And um, I'm going to send it to myself here in just a moment. But what we're going to do first is we're going to create a very cool thing uh, called a conditional format for inbound emails. So I go up in my in, in, up above my inbox here to view right here to the view ribbon and I'm going to create a new setting. So you click view settings and I go here, what pops up is a window. You can do a number of things, but in this case, I want conditional formatting. And so what I want to do is add one uh, and I'm going to title it invoice. It's just the name of the conditional formatting that I've set up. I'm going to call it invoice. And, uh, and I, but I want that font to be big, bold, and maybe some other color like maroon, why not, okay? So I've set what the font is gonna look like when it pops into my inbox, you're gonna love this. Now the condition is search for words, the word invoice in the subject field, but you could choose other things. So I'm just gonna click okay, okay, and okay. So now here I am in my inbox and I'm going to send that email that says new invoice. Okay, I just sent it and uh, what'll happen is live webinars, you never know, but what happens is when I get that email, that email, let's just, uh, let's just make sure I get that new email in here. It will be, when it does come in, it will be covered, colored bright blue. Now I'm gonna show you an example of that, or magenta in that case. So I get emails all the time that are web leads. So I have a folder called web leads and I've set that up for them, 
right in uh, right in here. So when I get a new web lead, it's colored bright green for, for color money, right? Pretty cool. I'm going to look at my chat questions here. All right, yeah, I do have quite a Rolodex in my in my uh, <laughs> in my calendar in my Outlook. Um, so notice how all these emails are colored bright green. They're in a different font. So when when I get them in my inbox, they're automatically colored with that awesome color. So I'm going to go in and show you the one that just came in with the invoice. Here it is, came into my inbox, and this was covered colored bright, you know, uh, magenta, bold, and I just want anything that has an invoice on it to be colored a very unique color. Super duper, if you ask me. This is one of the fun things that you can do. Uh, anyway, making, you can color inbound emails different ways. The idea is quick action, you know, we don't waste time, understand the important stuff that's coming in and so forth. So let's keep moving here. We probably got another 10 minutes. And by the way, you can chat questions. Thanks, Bryce, for the comment about the, my, uh, my Rolodex there. Uh, so that was the magic of rules and changing the font uh, automatically in emails. And uh, so let's talk about a fun thing that's, that's the ability to insert content into emails and appointments and things like that. So I'm just gonna show you a little simple trick. I'm just gonna create a new email and I'm gonna use first the, uh, the oldest, a very, it's well-worn, but not like I said earlier, not everyone knows about this. I'm gonna say, Bill, uh, I'm gonna send an email to Bill and I, I might've sent this email a hundred times. So maybe what I wanna do is just create um, a little blurb. In fact, I have one called blurb. Look at that. I start typing in the word blurb and it puts that content in the email automatically. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And now I can send this to, you know, Bill. And uh, let's just see, Bill Pitt. Okay, there, created the email, sent it off to Bill, and it was that easy. Now, how did I do that? Well, I'll go back and we'll kind of do it again. Let's say I had some content. Um, I will grab some content from, right, just here, okay. Um, all righty then. Okay, I got an email here that's this request for quote. All right. So maybe you send emails that are repetitive in nature. So here's how you, you create those quick parts. Real easy. You have to start with it one time. So you put your content in to an email, uh, blank email. You highlight it. Then you go up to insert. Go to quick parts right here. Go down to save selection to quick part gallery and give it a name. And I'm gonna say this one is uh, quote. That's the name of the quick part, okay? Like I wanna quote on something. Now I can activate it by just starting to type in the word quote. Notice it's predicting it, send me a quote. Ridiculously cool if you ask me. Now, a lot of you might know that, that one, but in Outlook 365, there's another feature called templates. And these, as I mentioned earlier, follow you around. Quick parts do not. They're local phenomena. They work only on the machine. You put them on without a lot of gyrations to get them transferred onto others. And trust me, you don't want to try that. It takes about an IT person with a PhD to get it done. So if you want to have these things follow you around, follow you around, you just use templates. It's right up here. It'll be right in your ribbon. If it's not, we'll talk a little bit about how to customize your ribbon in a moment. And you just click on that little icon and there's your templates. So I've got some templates in here. And so I use this all the time, by the way. And especially if I'm traveling or have, you know, jumping from one computer to another, I just put my templates in here. So there you have it. I can create a, a block of content of, of any of any length. Well, actually, there is a limit. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what the exact limit of the characters is, but I ran into it once. So Quick Parts doesn't seem to have that limit, or at least it's much bigger. But see, I, that's a pretty big block of content there. It's a whole giant email. And so that's using templates. Now, how do you create a template? You just get some text, you go over here, you gotta scroll all the way down to your bottom and where it says plus template, the little plus sign always means add now. And I'll call this one called banks two, okay? Put the content in there, save. And I'm not sure why, probably a copy of that. But anyway, that's how you would create a template in, the, in, um, in an email if you have 365. Now I mentioned earlier that I was gonna explain a few differences of, the, of what's different uh, between the uh, desktop version of Outlook, the desktop version of Outlook with 365, and then the web app 365. Well, it turns out that Outlook, 3, uh, Outlook 3, 2019 
is the same as uh, Outlook 2019 with 365. It's just, you don't have to buy the 365 package. You still get exactly the same product. Web app's different. I'm gonna, don't, now if you're a Microsoft, you know, web app uh, fan, don't take me wrong. I'm just gonna talk about uh, limitations and, and there's a couple things you can do with the web app that you can't do with, um, with the desktop. First of all, with the web app, you don't need Outlook desktop. So that's kind of cool might have a device uh, like an iPad or something where you don't have your uh, version of Outlook on it. So that works nicely and it provides a lot of the function, even categorizing most of the basic functions, uh, you know, searching and all of that are available right to you through the um, Outlook web app. Actually, I'm not in the Outlook web app, I was in my other one, but same idea. Here I am in my Outlook web app. And um, now what doesn't it do? Okay, well, there's about a hundred things it doesn't do. Uh, you notice there's no rules. There's no view um, options. There's very few options to decide what you wanna do. Um, so so what if though, there's, we look at some things that it, it does have. Let's say that you get an email. Oh, let me first show you what, let's say I get an email uh, from someone and I want to to make market as junk or do a couple of things. Outlook desktop has that. You can block this, never block the sender, block sender, never block the domain or uh, make it a junk uh, email. Oh, and by the way, junk email options shows you this is very important. You can decide how you want to handle junk email, but in the Microsoft 365 web app, there's a different one. There's a different little ad. There's a couple little added features to it. See that little three buttons? You're in an email, it's up on the right more actions. Now there's a bunch of things, but uh, I like to, especially the security option, because you can actually not just mark it as junk, which you put it in your junk folder, but you could mark it as phishing. And it'll ask if, I, if you if you want to report it. I don't want to report this bullet poor soul, but I could block it here. But the main thing I'm showing you is that you can mark it as phishing and report it. And that helps, you know, get those phishing pirates down uh, back to their planet they came from, hopefully. All right, so that's just a little little sidebar on the differences of the, the versions here. All right, so we're wrapping up here, getting close. I wanted to uh, talk briefly about uh, transforming. Um, um, I had a question about uh, DocuSign. I'll get that in a moment. Um, uh, transforming inbound emails into different things. So let's just say I get an email from someone and I wanted to create a contact from it. Let's just do that. You might know this, it's just a drag and drop. This will also segue us in a little bit into profit CRM and how that interrelates. But there's a drag and drop function in Outlook, which is pretty useful. So you just drag your email over, down over the people folder and let go. And then this is where profit CRM, if you're a profit CRM user or looking at it, will come in. So profit adds a duplicate detector to that drag and drop function if you're using it in Outlook. And it, it basically checks to see if that contact already exists. And if it does, you wouldn't want to create it again. So in this case, Anthony Hopkins already exists. This is the profit CRM duplicate checker. In that case, I could just open that contact from that, that uh, where it said existing match found. But if you didn't, I just click create new contact. It's warning me again. Now you're going to ask, what about signature parsing? Well, I prefer just doing it manually because the automated signature par par parsing, easy for me to say, is about 60% accurate, we found. We do have a product like that we're developing again, which should be a little better. But all I'm doing is you can copy paste or just drag things from like the signature line up into the to the um, area that you want it. And you've created a new contact in about 10 seconds from an inbound email. And plus if stuff was in the signature line, you could add it. The email itself is still retained in the contact. Voila, it's pretty nice time saver there too. Now, uh, maybe you wanted to create a task to follow up on this email, very, very apropos when it comes to, um, you know, managing your Outlook inbox and taming your inbox. And so one of the things you do, remember, deal with it, delegate it, delete it, or delay it. Well, in this case, I'm going to deal with it by creating a task with that, with that email. I just drug it over my task folder and look, it created the task with the subject line on it. And the, all I have to do now is give it a due date and maybe a reminder time optional. All right, categorize it if you want. And I've just created that task. And, and now you'll see that task that I created right here 
from my inbound email. So creating tasks is super easy. And one final thing on that, you can create appointments from inbound emails. Let's say I wanted to create a meeting to review this invoice. I get it, I just drag it over my calendar. It creates a new invoice meeting. I can add other things, invite people and so on. And that, that uh, new invoice meeting will now be uh, maybe a follow-up item and I'll make it for later in the day. And uh, maybe it's a real big invoice. We have to spend an hour on it. There you go. There's that. So a drag and drop can also create from an inbound email. It can also create a meeting on your calendar. Pretty awesome. All right. We're going to wrap up. We try to keep these to about 45 minutes. We're going to wrap up with showing you a little bit about Profit CRM. And really what Profit CRM is a way to uh, help you uh, you know, manage all of your time, but very importantly in business, manage your contacts and other things. So Profit CRM is pretty nice. It works right with Outlook. It just basically adds functionality to Outlook. So if I have Profit, I, I have a more robust contact manager is one of the main things that kind of as a starting point Profit offers to people. And if you're a Profit user, I'm sure you already know about this, but I'll show you a couple of things and kind of enhance some of those things we just talked about. Um, Maybe I want to create a task with a contact. It's easy to do, create a task. Um, and it's to call Jose here. And I want to make it due today. I'm showing you this for a reason. It's because what Profit will do is, is it'll now show that task that I created here on my task list. And uh, I'll just go into my calendar here for a moment. So I created it in Profit, but there it is on my, uh, on my task list in Outlook. But another thing is that you can start tracking activities with these very, very easily. So I can see all the tasks created with a contact, just a contact-centric view of all the Outlook functions. I can see any, any emails as, that I've ever sent to Jose here. Uh, let, me, let me pick Hillary. I've had a few more with Hillary. There you go. So these emails are, are sent to that person, right? or received from that person as the case may be. So in this case, I'll do Anthony because I've had a lot of emails with Anthony. So you can see from these case, they're all, you know, here's the emails from Anthony, the emails to Anthony and so on. So that's one of the primary functions that Profit CRM adds, but another very useful thing to show you two more things and we'll call it a wrap. One of them is just to add notes. Now you or your administrator should, well, if Profit will be able to make predefined customized entries to this for your team. So maybe you want one of them to be a cold call. So you don't have to type it in, left the voicemail, things like that. Many of you already know about it if you're an existing profit user, but those also roll up into various types of reports. And finally, we can combine a few things that we learned in, um, in, um, in this Outlook section to here where we have a function called uh, group email. Now profit can, does integrate right out of the box with MailChimp and we have a constant contact integration, a new one coming out. But there's also a group email function built right into Profit. So I could say, just send a group email to that list, creates a recipient list. I could personalize it. I could give it an importance. And when I create email, you'll see that I'm gonna use quick parts here, All right? My blurb, uh, there's another thing in Outlook and you could create a quick part if it's a little quicker for you. You can, sometimes you have to make your window a little wider. You can put your signature in this, for example, my main signature. Um, all right, so now I'm ready to send that. When I click send, everyone's get a personalized Outlook email from me to, to uh, the recipient there. Pretty awesome. And the main thing about that is they do not look like ads that have, you know, somebody sent you that have the little square X's and stuff. And did you know, almost all of these real mass emails get sucked into either your junk folder or this dreaded other folder because they detect all of this sort of mass stuff. So when they get sent through profit, as you may know, they are just uh, like I do webinars this way a lot to my clients. They're just an email I sent to everyone, but every person gets a personalized email from me to them. Hey, we made it through in about 45 minutes today. So I would really, really um, super authentically like to thank everybody for investing so much time to, to uh, take a look at this webinar. And if you're watching the video, thank you for that. I'm going to post this for about 30 seconds, but you all, you all know where to reach me. I'm easy to find. You can just go to avidian.com, our company website, or you can reach out to our customer service anytime, uh, or I'm easy to reach. Feel free to contact me if I can help you in any way. Hey, I want you all to have a good rest of the day. Be safe, and we'll talk to you again soon, I hope. Sure. Thank you. Boost productivity and get the most out of Outlook with Profit CRM. Have a look at the following topics, which are covered in the Profit CRM Learning Series. 
visit www.avidian.com.